Hey everyone, this is Ken, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial, guys, on a brand new expandable drawbridge. Now, what's great about this, guys, is the fact that this bad boy could go from one block wide all the way as high as 15 wide, which is awesome. Now, yes, guys, I am using shaders and textures. All that information will be on the left hand side, so if you want to check that out, can I get the same effect? Here it is. But for the majority of this video, guys, we're going to be playing on the default texture pack so that nobody gets confused. But sometimes, trust me, that can happen. Now, right here, guys, right off the bat, you're gonna have a button right here on the side, and the second it opens, it's gonna expand on both sides equally, making this a total of eight blocks wide, which is awesome. Now, the second you hit that button again, they're gonna retract right back into the wall, perfectly smooth and in perfect sequence. Another thing here, guys, is the fact that no matter what button you hit on each side, it's always gonna do the opposite of what's happening. So if you open it here, it could close on one side. So let me show you what I mean by that. Now we're gonna open this button here, well, we're gonna open the drawbridge by pressing that button, cross to the other side. As you can see, it's still there, solid as a rock. And press the button again, and it's gonna actually do the complete opposite. Which is just awesome, because the whole thing works perfectly smooth. Now, pause the video again, because <laughs> right now we're going to be setting this whole area up and let's try to get at least 300 likes, guys, because trust me, it makes a huge difference to the channel. Now, that blue area represents that water, that ravine that you're going to be using in the center of this whole build. Now, on the side here, you're going to have to delete these blocks from one end down to the other of three blocks wide, and you're going to have to dig an additional three more blocks on this side. So everything else stays the same, but this one section here is where your button's gonna be at. So make sure you place this. I'm gonna be placing the button on the left, so make sure you have this set up. Now right over here, guys, you're gonna go a grand total of six blocks. And on number six, you're gonna place your block right there. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. Now, let me just clear this up because that's going to be one connection right there. And all you have to do is place a straight line of rest on dust connecting one side to the other. Now, the only difference here, guys, right here, somewhere around the middle, you're going to place a sticky piston, making sure that the rest on dust connects to it. Because that has to activate that and a rest on block in front of that sticky piston. Perfect. Now, right here on this side, we're just going to clear this all up. I'm just going to make this more of a visual thing so you guys can understand that we're going to be using this entire space or this entire strip on the opposite end. Now, on this corner, we're going to place a block there with a redstone torch on top of it with another block and another redstone torch. Now, once you have that look, we're going to, repl well, we're going to replicate this on this side as well. Place a block with a redstone torch, another block, and another redstone torch. Now, you're going to place a redstone dust from one side all the way to the other, but make sure you do not place it in front of the redstone block. Okay? Perfect. Now, we are setting the button system here. So, place a block above ground level parallel to that green block. So, right here, right above the ground level, you're going to place your button on top or on the side, no matter how you want to place it. And here you can place a block by one block underneath that block with a redstone dust above it. Then you can place a sticky piston facing downwards with an observer block and replicate that on this side as well. Now, well, what we're creating here, guys, is essentially a T flip flop that's activated by two buttons. You see? So no matter what side you press it on, guys, it's still activating the same um, redstone. Now, right here on top of that redstone dust, you can place an observer block with a block on top of it. And that's parallel to the green blocks. See, so we're going to place an observer block right here, right there on top of it. See how that's kind of like right parallel to the actual green blocks? And a block on top with a block in front of it facing or towards the direction of the water or those, you know, lapis blocks. Now we're going to work on the width of the actual bridge. So place some repeaters right there across from one end to the other 
and redstone dust behind it. Now I'm doing the maximum size, which is 15, but you could always make this smaller. Now just repeat that on this side as well. And add that redstone dust right across. Now you're going to add a block right in front of each repeater. Perfect. Now you want, once you act, well, once you're done with that, you're going to go right over here, back to the rest on torch, and you're going to place a furnace on top. Now it doesn't have to be a furnace. Just make sure it's an immovable block that cannot be moved by pistons. If you want to be on the safe side, you could use obsidian, but I just like to use furnaces because they're super easy and you know, they're super cheap to make. Now, once you've done that, add some redstone dust right on top of each one till you get to that redstone torch. Perfect. And you can do the same thing here, guys. Now, the reason I'm kind of lining this right across because we're adding 15 on both sides and they kind of have to be parallel to the repeaters. Now, right behind that redstone dust, <clears throat> you're going to add a block temporarily and you're going to place your observer block right on top of it. And delete the dirt right underneath. You see how they're all facing forward? Let's kind of clear this out. Now, once you've done that, you're going to get your sticky pistons and place it right behind each observer block. Now, guys, whatever you do on one side, you have to simply replicate it on the other side. So just like we did here, guys, add the temporary dirt parallel to the rest on dust and just simply replicate what we did on that side. Now, once you replicated both sides, we're going to roll right, but we're going to go right here. And on the opposite side here, gonna, this is the only time where you're going to go beyond the border. So just break this up like so. And I'm kind of just breaking two blocks right parallel to the observer blocks and the repeaters. And just kind of one block up, you see? So these two blocks here, and just kind of extend that all the way down till you get to the furnace. You know, honestly, that's the only time where you have to go a little further out. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You're going to place two side blocks and then two honey blocks and go in this back and forth pattern. You see? Trust me, this is extremely important. Now, when you go to the opposite side, just out of habit, you want to make sure you invert that pattern. So you see how over there we use slime for the first one. Now we're going to use honey and then slime and then go back and forth once again in the same exact pattern. Perfect. All right. Now that we have that all nicely done on both sides, go right over here on the first block, add a straight row of observer blocks. And then again, you're going to add another set of sticky pistons. And repeat that same pattern right on top of each slime and honey block like so. Alright, now starting here guys on each corner, parallel to the actual repeaters, you're going to place two furnaces or two unmovable blocks. So right here, you're going to curve that in just a little bit. And right there, you're going to add two furnaces on each side parallel to the actual repeaters. So you should have this kind of look. Now, right now, you're going to place another row of blocks going from one furnace to the other, or basically on top of each repeater. And once you got that look down, guys, we're going to start setting up the honeycombs or the honey blocks and the slime blocks in that back and forth pattern. So right now, we're going to start with slime, go about four blocks forward. Add four more blocks of honey blocks, then four more blocks of slime, and you, you get the rhythm. <laughs> it gets repetitive, trust me. Awesome. Now, this is extremely important, guys, what we're about to do next. Make sure, you see how we started here with slime? On this first one, it has to be honey. It has to be the complete opposite of what that is, because they're going to touch at one point when they open. So once again, repeat that same exact pattern, but kind of inverted. 
so that when they do meet, they're complete opposites, okay? Otherwise, when they do meet and they're not opposites, they're going to get stuck, and your whole design is going to get messed up. Now, once you've done that, right now, we're going to place a block of your choice that you want to use for the actual ground. I'm just going to use some dark oak, but use any block you want to represent the floor. Now, I'm going to add some blocks right here. We're going to clear this out so you guys get a better visual of what's happening. Okay, so remember, this is the water. This represents the water, so I'm just going to kind of clear this out a little bit, clear out the sides so you can see exactly how this is supposed to look in your ravine or your, you know, your castle setup, whatever you're using. So let's kind of add this up and let's clear this out. And I'll be back with you guys in a GIF. All right, that was quick. So you can clearly see that both sides are empty. You can really see this kind of taking awesome shape and it just looks great, you know? So trust me, this is gonna look perfect in your setup. Now, what I did was I added some stairs right here on the edge. You can add any block you want. At this point, it's really just to decorate and really set it up to your style and how you really wanna make this work. And all you have to do here, guys, is simply cover this up and just add your own personal touches so this can line up perfectly with your build. All right, now that we got that done, let's test it out. Make sure everything's working properly. Let's hit that button. Everything's gonna open perfectly in perfect sequence and close the same way. Now you see this ravine area, guys? Now you can make this as deep as you want. Just bear in mind, make sure the redstone underneath here is in perfect sequence. So when that activation happens, they both get the exact signal on each side exactly at the same time. Otherwise, one will come out faster than the other, and it will destroy your entire design. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this build, and let's try to get at least 300 likes because you guys are awesome. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. Remember to please leave a comment and to click that subscribe button if you want to join. Thank you.